Hi everyone, this video is going to give you an idea of the construction techniques used to build our 800mm diameter DIY pizza oven packs. Being a basic summary, it won't go into too much detail about the different construction parts, but there is a comprehensive video series that comes with a pack when you purchase it. This is just to give you a general idea of how the ovens are put together so you can feel confident in your decision to go ahead and build one. The first part of the project is to get stuck in and get the insulation board sorted. So after a little bit of pre-trimming, we're now going to place the board on the concrete half and use the aluminium profiles provided to create the shape that we want to cut to. Now the insulation board is really easy to cut with a handsaw. We then cover the insulation board with a layer of tin foil and then using a hand screwdriver and the screws provided, we just simply screw the aluminium profiles around the edge of the insulation board. This provides a bit of a perimeter for us to pour our refractory mortar in to shape the floor and make it level. We're now going to do a bit of a dry fit of our bricks, so it's important they're all pre-cut and ready to go, so then we can place them straight onto the mortar. We'll take you right through the cutting process, and we do provide some blades, but you will need your own little angle grinder. It's pretty easy work, a little bit dusty, so you just need the right safety gear. The floor gets created now, and to do this we mix up one of the bags of refractory mortar, pour it in and then use a straight edge pushing from side to side on the boxing to create a beautiful level floor. We're now going to lay our pre-cut fire bricks in place while the mortar is nice and wet. That gives us an opportunity to sort of bump them down and make them nice and flat. So we just work our way across the whole floor until it's completed and then we take something like a level or a big long straight edge and just make sure they're all sitting down nice and flush with each other. The floor now gets left to cure overnight, and that's the end of day one. Day two starts by placing the cardboard structure on the floor, and then we're going to build our arch. Now this is one of the trickiest processes of oven building, is to get that arch entry looking really smart. But the cardboard mould makes this part so easy, as you can see. The kit comes with a little vent format, which is just a little bit of cardboard mould, and also a stainless steel starter ring. Now that starter ring is going to hold the flue in place when we've finished building this first layer. The first step in the process of adding the refractory mortar is to take care of the arch. So we just basically squish a whole lot of mortar in between those arch bricks to hold them permanently in place. We're then going to start working our way around the vent area and of course that stainless steel starter ring. So the little plastic trowel that you get with the kit is great for working with the material. So it's really now just a matter of mixing up the material and adding it over the cardboard moulds. It's a really straightforward process, especially as we give you all the mixing ratios to make the product really easy to work with. Now this certainly doesn't need to be the prettiest of coats, it's just more important that it's evenly spread over the whole structure. So that's basically it for day two. We now leave it to cure for 24 hours. So day three starts with insulation and we're going to add two layers of 25mm ceramic fibre insulation. So we add two layers so that uh, all the joins can be overlapped and we get a really complete insulation job. It's a really easy product to cut and work with. Now we're just going to wrap it up like an Easter egg and uh, that's done with a basic tin foil. Very straightforward, we can actually apply a bit of tape to hold it in place. Next comes the chicken wire, so this just helps the plaster to hold its form and give it something to grip onto. And using an angle grinder is a little bit haphazard, but uh, it's a bit of fun, but uh, you can just use a pair of pliers for that if you're a little bit uncomfortable with that process. It's then just a matter of using the plastic cable ties to pull all the wire together and make sure it's sitting nice against the aluminium. We then cut a few pieces for the front of the structure as well so we can shape that area. So with those layers in place, it's now time to apply a waterproof mortar to the structure. So this does a couple of things. Firstly, it helps us shape the outside of the oven to, uh, to the look that we want, but it also acts as a bit of an extra safeguard to provide an internal waterproof lining, just in case any moisture sort of seeps through cracks or whatever from the outside of the oven. Now we get a chance to use what we call the Curvinator 3000, which is just an amazing tool for creating smooth looking curved pizza ovens. So you'll just see in the video here, look I'm no plasterer by trade, but it takes a job that was just only really achievable by a professional plasterer and makes it uh, easy for a DIY person to get stuck in and create those beautiful curves on a pizza oven with ease. So look, just look at it go, and it's such a simple little tool, such a simple little invention, 
but it just works so well and it should give you the confidence that you need to take a step forward and know that you're going to be able to create a professional looking pizza oven. Just having a look now at the front around the arch area, you'll see that the material and the mix ratios that we give you is just really easy to work with. So using a plastic trowel, it sticks when you put it on somewhere, it doesn't fall away, fall down or slump all over the place, it's just really easy to apply. So this coat can actually be the final coat of your oven. From the pictured oven here, you just let it dry off a little bit and then you rub it over with a sponge just to bring up some of the sand and smooth out any of the imperfections. If you're really looking for a classy oven, you can then add the three plaster system that we recommend and we'll take you through now. So to get that really awesome finish that we're looking for on the oven, we're actually going to apply three coats of plaster. Now it might seem a bit extreme, but we're going to build these different coats up until we achieve the, uh, the level that we want. Now remember, we still want things to be a little bit rustic, so we don't need to get too pedantic about it. The first coat is spread on, and then we use the Curvinator 3000 just to push it around and get the general shape of the oven. This is a reinforced layer of plaster, so it provides quite a bit of strength and resistance against the oven cracking. So once the oven's had a chance to cure for 24 to 48 hours, come with a piece of sandpaper and just knock off all the bigger edges and start creating those great curves that we want. Next up is a bit of a sloppy coat of plaster actually, so it's really easy to move or push around. It goes on about 5mm thick, but as you can see it's quite runny, so it's going to allow us to really shape those curves quite easily. Once we've pushed a layer around the oven, then we get stuck in once again with the Curvinator 3000, which will help us create those beautiful curves we're after in the oven. So this certainly won't be the finished coat. We'll uh, have a few imperfections that we'll need to sand out the next day. You can see a few ridges and what have you in the, uh, in the picture there. But it will allow us to create the smooth surface we need to apply the last float finish. So the third and final coat goes on in a really thin layer. So we're looking at about one or two mils here. It's quite, once again, it's quite sloppy, so it's easy to push around. And we almost sort of scrape it back to take it back to that sort of one or two mil level. And then we just gently roll a sponge over the top. So what that does is that rolls over the little imperfections that we have in the plaster layer below. And then it just gently brings up the sand out of the material. So you get that really awesome textured look on top of the oven. So this just gives you an idea of the look you'll achieve after the plaster has been painted. So we do the same on the front of the oven and this little clip will just sort of demonstrate to you how easy it is to bring up that sand and smooth it up and get that really classy finished look to the oven. So this is the same oven painted up and you can see we've added a door and a little front tile there. So it becomes a real feature that you can be proud of in your back garden. Then it's time for some pizza. Hope you've enjoyed the video, hope you've learned something and we really hope you take on the challenge to build one of our packs.